Hey y'all, it's Laura and welcome to Bookies and Cookies. Today we will be going through my anticipated releases of autumn 2016. And if you don't know the drill, I sort the seasons based on the solstices and equinoxes because Avatar The Last Airbender taught me right and apparently I'm just like a farmer and I'm just like referring to the farmer's almanac, it's fine. These are books that will be released September 22nd through December 21st. I will be omitting any books from series that I'm not caught up yet, such as Gemina, which I'm like super pumped for, but I haven't even read Illuminae, so like, I can't speak on whether I love it or not. Same with The Midnight Star by Marie Lu. There's a few others that I'm just, I'm not caught up, so how can I anticipate it? So these are all books of series I'm either in progress for, or new books, or standalones, or other things. Also, while prepping for this video, I realized that my birthday does not fall in the fall like I thought it did. It falls in the summer. And I am not a summer child. I am not a sweet summer child. I'm, a, I'm an autumn, I'm an autumnal goddess. Like, okay, this candle is like the representation of my soul in candle form. Bright red, gala apple, juicy fig, eucalyptus leaf, fir balsam. So we're lighting this in honor of fall. If my light work. My birthday's still in the fall. No one can tell me otherwise. It's my favorite season. You are being insubordinate and churlish. Hey! I mean, I love me some bookish candles, but like Bath and Body Works three wicks where the flakes fragrance is at. I love having props in my anticipated release videos, like my smoothie for my summer one and my candle for my fall one, and I wonder what I'll do for winter and spring. I'll figure it out. You'll know I will. I'm creative and I'm an autumnal goddess. The first book in fall that I'm anticipating is Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. It comes out on September 27th. It is the second in the Six of Crows duology, which is fabulous. I read it back in January. I wasn't really expecting much. I was like, do I need to read the Grease Trilogy before I read Six of Crows? And don't. Read Six of Crows, then Crooked Kingdom, and then read the Grease Trilogy. The Grease Trilogy is interesting. Six of Crows is just so wonderfully built. It's about six outcasts who perform an impossible heist and some of the characters are people of color and there's a queer relationship and there's a biracial relationship and it's just it's fabulous and it's everything that matters. My heart cannot handle. Next up we have like five books on October 4th so let's get through them. The first is the Harry Potter Chamber of Secret illustrated book. I don't even have the Philosopher's Stone slash Sorcerer's Stone illustrated book but I'm whipped and so I'll buy probably both of them at the same time because why spread out your purchases and your money? Just buy all the books all the time. Why? Nah, nah. Yeah, I'm basically whipped. Next is Our Chemical Hearts by Crystal Sutherland. This is her debut novel. She'll be one of the authors at the Colorado Teen Book Con being hosted by Tattered Cover on October 15th and I'm volunteering for that so I'm like, I gotta read the books of the authors that I'll see there before I meet them in case I meet them and then we have to talk and I'm like, I don't know about your book at all and I want to know about their books. So this is a boy meets girl story except the girl wears boy baggy clothing and she walks with a cane and she doesn't shower very much so it's not really a typical pretty boy meets pretty girl make pretty babies it seems a little bit more complicated from that and it also is about discussions about disability so it's hopefully something I can learn from next is when the moon was ours by Anna Marie McLemore and this book, I don't even know what boxes, it doesn't check. There's person of color representation in a Latina and a South Asian character. There's a transgender boy. The author is queer and a person of color. The transgender boy starts falling for his best friend. There's magical realism and it's in like a Latinx culture and, and there's witches and there's fantasy and there's also romance and it's finding yourself and your gender and identity. And I've heard nothing but great things like all at once in the past like two days. Like I think my Twitter feed's been like filled up. Next up on October 11th is Iron Cast by Destiny Soria. It's a POC author writing about POC characters and it's a wonderful own voices books and it's in Boston in 1909 or 1919. I don't know, early 1900s. And there's a speakeasy where Corinne and Ada, the main characters work and they're best friends. But there's like these homeopaths who like create illusions and art with like the special ability they have in their blood and one of the friends gets imprisoned and they're caught up in more than they can handle and I just found out about this book on Twitter yesterday. Yeah, just yesterday. If y'all can't tell that I'm working to read more diversely, I'm not doing a very good job of telling y'all. On October 25th is A Darkly Beating Heart by Lindsay Smith. The main character, Reiko, is a bisexual Japanese American girl but after a failed suicide attempt her family sends her back to their extended family in Japan to straighten things out with her. After visiting a historic 19th century Japanese village, she finds herself coming back and forth between time periods and living her life as Reiko and as the 19th century Mio, and both trying to get revenge and trying to right their worlds around them. This brings together a person of color, an LGBT plus character, 
and time travel with fantasy. Like, what more do you want? Like, I don't know what else you want. Just basically look at Dahlia Adler's, like, Twitter timeline or her like blog and her master list because uh, she knows what's up. And the last book coming out on November 1st is like one of my favorites I've read this year and that is The Sun is Also Star by Nicola Yoon. I read The Ark back in June. I love it so much. It's about Daniel, the first generation son of Korean immigrants and trying to live up to his parents' perfect expectations of going to number one school Harvard or number two school Yale and becoming a doctor or a lawyer are basically his two options when he's kind of a poet and a dreamer at heart. Mix that with Natasha, who is a Jamaican immigrant who has been living in the country illegally since she was eight with her parents, who are going to be deported, like, tonight. So she's working to stop the deportation and runs into Daniel, and it wasn't inevitable that they would meet, but once they met, it was inevitable that they would fall in love, and it's beautiful, and it's a boy meet girl story, but there's a lot of problems, obviously, because she's getting deported. There's different family expectations. And the book is just so beautifully written in different points of views and in secondary characters. There's different, like, conversations about, like, black hair and the natural hair and what that means and about timing and fate and needing and things. It's so good. I'm overhyping it for myself, but I love it. They're just my babies and they're precious and they're my favorites and they're just Great. Nicola herself is a Jamaican immigrant and this book is basically her and her husband's love story and that's why we need diverse books because that's it's her own story I mean you just change the name so instead of David and Nicola it's Daniel and Natasha and I could just see so much of them in the books. It's everything, everything. Okay, how many times are gonna, am I gonna make that joke? Next on November 8th is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. It is a retelling of Alice in Wonderland from the Queen of Hearts point of view. Kath is the main character and she is destined to be the Queen of Hearts, um, but she really just wants to be the Queen of Tarts. She owns a bakery in Wonderland and she's like, I've just, I've only read the first page, but the amount and love and care that she has put into her tarts is more than I've felt for like any person ever. This is gonna be a love letter to her baking. I'm gonna be so hungry by the end of this book. I'm gonna be salivating. And I'm not really much of an Alice in Wonderland fan, so I really hope this book turns it around for me, especially with the baking aspect. I'm gonna be so hungry. There better be a cookbook that comes with this book. That should be a companion. You're welcome for the idea. Coming out on November 19th is The Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them script book by J.K. Rowling. I should just open up a tab for J.K. Rowling at this point. I should just like leave it open and just be like, yep, oh, you have another book, just add it in, just drop it in, just put it on my tab. But it has a beautiful cover though, so I'm very excited about that. Coming out on November 22nd is Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Coulters. The main character, Denna, is betrothed to the king of a neighboring country, but in that country, magic is forbidden, and yikes, Denna has magic. She has fire magic, so like, that's a big um, no-no. So it ends up being that her betrothed sister teaches her all about like the horses that are really important to the country and her name is Mare and she rides horses so that's like really like on the nose. Then their friendship starts to become something more so there is a lesbian relationship in this book and I hope it's explored really well and not really badly because I've heard like complete opposites. I've seen 4.5 reviews, I've seen two star reviews where like it's too much about the horses and it's like not very interesting to read and it's just such like a disservice when like you're just trying to be representative and then it's not even a good book. But I mean like I was the horse girl in middle school so I feel like I'm in my element and like it's right up my alley. Uh, so I'll be reading this either way but despite some of the bad reviews of people saying like good relationship just really bad book. And the last book I am anticipating in the fall, technically the fall, is the fifth volume of Lumberjanes coming out on December 13th aka Taylor Swift's birthday so really that's the holiday so I won't be reading Lumberjanes on that day I'll read it like the day after. I've only read the first so far, but I loved it so much. They're hilarious. It's about these five girls who are at summer camp, and there's a diverse cast of characters. They all kind of take their turns in the spotlight. Some are silly, some are like ridiculous, some are super smart. There's kind of a relationship happening between the two of them, so I really hope that blossoms into something beautiful. So it's definitely a graphic novel series I recommend. If I missed any books, it's not because I'm not anticipating them. It might be because I don't know about them, or there are some on my TBR that I'm not talking about here because I can't talk about them all in here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're excited about some of these books and you comment below with any books happening in the fall that I might have missed because I'll probably add them to my ever-growing TBR. My name is Laura, this has been Bookies and Cookies. I post videos on Sundays and Thursdays. I love each and every one of you and I hope you never forget it, that you are loved and remember that autumn is the best season. Thanks guys. Whee! I hope that's like really like visually interesting. Oh, those are super smoky. Oh, are you coming back to life? Oh, you did.
with dead candle. There's roses that come out of his wrists and these witches want them and they're like, mm, no witches, you don't get the roses out of my wrists. Yeah, that was really not clear.